This is the open seam, obviously. Um, this backing sheet here is slightly tacky, and the idea is that it holds your piece of card in place. I'm just going to stick that on there. I printed this piece out previously on my normal um, Epson printer onto some thin card, and that's ready to go into the machine. So I'll just line that up with this blue line here and press the load button there. And then that's ready to go. Uh, the computer's ready and I will hit send on the computer. That will send the data across onto the, and the first thing that it does is it finds the registration marks. This bit here has got a light sensor in it. So it's finding the registration marks in the corners. There's one down there, square up there, and there's another like an L shape, inverted L shape at the top. So it's found those registration marks. And then now this is because this is an auto blade, it's just setting the depth. So that first blade on the left is the cutting blade. I was going to go around and do all the cuts first. And then when all the cuts are finished, it will reset again. It will use this blue blade here, which is set to a shallower depth. And it's going to go and just do... There's only a couple of score lines in this project, but it's going to do with them now. So that's what two, three score lines. There we go. And that's everything complete. That's the cutting done. It's so much easier than using scissors. OK, so I press unload on the printer. Out it pops. And that's the silhouette cutting done for the day. Let's move that back out of the way is just sort of carefully peel them off one by one and try not to curve them too much as you peel them off. There's the head, it's very small. This pull tab goes inside the neck for, that's the bit that does the work, as it were. Just pull this out of the way. This is the scrap. There's the body. This folds up into the neck. All its different sections. This piece, this little tiny piece is going to cover. See, I'm curving the actual sheet rather than the piece. There we go, it keeps that flat. That piece will cover the peg, the wire on the peg, I mean. And then this piece is going to make a tab. I've used this template here, and there's a tiny, there's a centre line there, so I've marked that. That's the centre hole there. I've transferred that onto the peg there. That gives me a place to drill. I've got a very small drill to start us off. This is a two millimetre drill, so I'm just going to drill a hole. This is going to go a piece of waste wood to make sure you don't drill through your workbench. This is just going to drill all the way through. Bottom. Try and keep your drill as upright as possible, so it should be centred on the other side as possible. Uh, change the drill bit. So this one's a three mil drill. And this time I'm drilling just through the top layer, not through the bottom one. So I've now got, I've got a three mil hole at the top. Two mil hole at the bottom, and that just gives a bit of space for movement. Okay. Right. Uh, so I've got a paper clip, and I'm going to straighten this out first of all. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a loop on the end of it to match that. It doesn't need to be exactly the same. Just as close as you can get them. Within reason. Like that. Okay. And then the purpose of that, so I've finished with that template. There's my pull wire and one of my smallest pieces 
from the previous cut is this one that's got a score line in the middle. That there is going to go over the top of that. So, find the glue. Glue spreader. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on both surfaces because this is going to be sandwiched. And so some parts of it are going to have wire on. Bit of glue there, bit of glue there. There's my wire. And then the loop just gets basically trapped inside there. Like that. Pinch it shut. And you can actually see the shape of the wire in the card though. There's that. This part's the pull tab. A bit of hair right there. Uh, this is going to glue on there. Like that. And then that glues onto that pull tab there. Comes down. And then that's that part done. So the neck is made from these sections, one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Uh, and these basically curve round. So what I'm going to do is, before I even start assembling it, is just gently curve them round on this. This is a chopstick. And just curve them round on there. So they're already curved in the right direction. Where I want them. And then I'm going to use this chopped stick as a former while I'm assembling this. So I'm going to start at the top, curve the first piece round, apply a tiny dot of glue up here. This is quite fiddly this first one because it's so small. And curve that the other side over to match it. There we go. That's the first, so that's the first Sections and basically I just work my way down, gluing each of the sections like that. It's obviously not glued to the cocktail, the uh, chopstick that's just there as a, as a form, as I say. So the second one, a little bit of glue, curve it round. easier as you go along because they get larger and larger. Although none of them are mass, obviously because this is a little this is a dinosaur that fits on the end of a clothes peg. And the last one. There. there we go. So now we've got six sections all ready to go. Like that. And they'll curve like that. The neck of the dinosaur. The next step is to glue the the pull tab that we made earlier inside the neck. And this basically goes right up inside. And this top here glues to the inside of that very top section there. So I'll put a little dot where the grey area is, a little dot of glue, where the grey area is. Like that. Doesn't need much. And I'm going to use a little pair of pliers here just to nip this up because it is awkward to get to. I'm just trying to line it up right in the middle like that. There we go. Now I'm going to pull that tab, pull the wire and the neck works. Good stuff. So the head is tiny, it's a little tiny piece, uh, basically you just fold it. You imagine a, a line near the eyes, like that. just give it a gentle curve like that and then that's going to sit on the top. Like that on the top of the neck. Okay, now the, the back of the neck is the solid part, the front of the neck is the, the cross cut part, so obviously the head needs to line up appropriately. 
I'm just going to trim that little tiny bit off there. So a little dot of glue on either side of the head like that. And if you can see. Ping. That's how small that is. And then that just pinches on either side there. It's quite handy at this point if you just get your if you recover your chopstick from before, put that inside, and that gives you something to press up against. Just to make sure that the glue loops into place. Okay. And I need to do that again. Because it's well out of alignment. Let's try that again. So there are score marks on that one, so it should fold easily. Do that. I can hear someone knock it, hammering outside. I don't know if you can hear it. And someone going past in the car. So there's the body, and then the head and neck are going to fit inside there. Like that. So a little bit of glue on these inside tabs. That neck's going to go there. That curves around. I'll try and make sure that the head's still pointing towards the front. that round and again a chopstick comes in handy just have to give you something to press up against okay one side and the other side and I'll try to line up these edges with the bottom of the neck tube. Okay, okay. The wire's going to come, this is the bottom of the underside of the peg, the wire's going to come out through that hole there. What I'm going to do before we assemble it is I'm just going to shut the scrape a sort of trough into there carefully. Notice that I'm scraping away from myself so I don't cut myself. And that's the wire itself when the wire comes out, you'll see in a second, but the wire's going to sit inside that trough. So, wire down through the hole. Dinosaur on the top of the peg. Like that. So that's like that. And then as the peg opens and closes, it'll pull the head down like that. So, to do this, I need to glue the inside of the feet. I'm going to do both sides at once because I'm just going to pinch across from both. Thread that onto there. Fit the feet just slightly below the edge of the, not too far, below the edge of the peg. Maybe a little bit further back as well actually. Same on the other side, you can hear the blackbird singing. So I'm just annoyed about something outside. There we go. Like that. And when 
that's ready to glue up. This is the wire that pulls the head up and down and we need to fasten that to the bottom jaw of the peg so that when you open the peg like that it, it moves the head and neck up and down. So the way we're going to do that is going to pick our highest point of movement, grab hold of the wire like that, bend it over. So yeah, that's right. So I've now got this at right angles, and then with this, with a pair of side cutters, which I've got somewhere. There we go. I've got giant side cutters here. Pair of side cutters, and I only need a little tiny bit. Just snip that off of there, like that, and then that's going back into that. That sits into that trough that we made earlier on. Bit of glue onto the cover. A bit too much glue, and boom, and that just holds the wire into place. Make sure everything's flat underneath the peg. Allows it to stand nicely like that. And then it should just, there we go. How's that? Working nicely. And here it is. It's a thing of beauty, I think you'll agree.